things I have done yet. Well, it's good to see you, Ray. I mean, obviously, we talk anyway, man. You know what I mean? And yeah. For those that you don't know, obviously, Raymond has been, Mr. Groove Rider, has been inspiring me for years, no end. And, uh, you know, we just kind of like, I don't even want it to be one of them things where it's kind of like, yeah, all the stuff that happened, it was, we know what happened. We, you know, I think it was a game changer. I think we, I think the only thing that I want to share is I think that I was a bit, I was your biggest fan. Biggest fan. <laughs> I used to just stand outside the queue waiting to get into Rage just to get a glimpse of you coming out, man, the back of the street. <laughs> Waiting with a dub plate, just in the That's hope, right. in the hope that I could just get. I remember once I was just passing this, <laughs> passing the dub plate with a head on it over the fence, and I couldn't even get in. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I, man, I used to see like grinning on the side, man, just banging the side of the cage. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, like, well, I mean it was good talk. Scary, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean, to, he was stalking me, man. I didn't know what the hell was going on, man. <laughs> well, I kind of was. Because we used to go to music, music power, you know, in Harringay, yeah, Chris, yeah. and and Chris used to get all excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excited in the mix, so we spliff, and he's getting excited. And then when you rolled up, he just changed completely because you just got to <laughs> get him out of the way. And he put out a bag of whites. He dropped like thirty-two bars of a white label. You, know, <laughs> you just you just nod your head with a spliff, just nod your head while you're building one up. And me, Kimmy, and Jane were standing in the shop with Toby. You looked like he was out of Forty Towers or something with his long hair. <laughs> Just, you know, just looking to see what dregs were going to be left. You know, if there were any double. Yeah, that's or, right, that's right. Any you know, other copies that were left when you were well, going. some sort of system. I don't, I, do you know what? I don't even know how it got like that, to be honest with you. I, I have no idea because it's not like I was, like, bullying anyone or anything like that. Do you know what I'm saying? I was just, like, just being me. No, but you were infamous anyway. I mean, you know, there's no such thing as underground anymore. There's, I mean, and I think that I understand... I understand when all these old fogies start lamenting for it. Look, we did it, and that was it. It's a different world right now. But in terms of the genre itself, that was for me. That was what made it because it was. It, it became, you know, for the music that was happening at the time. Because we jumped on, we came on this thing. I was pretty late when you know you think about all the people who already established Absolute Two Records Production House. You know, I came on the back of Reinforce, and you guys had already had this history from Spectrum and already going back from Acid yeah. House. And I just kind yeah. of got in, you know what I mean? So there's already a history there. But we was I was a massive fan. And and I think you saw you've seen the music change so many times. And and at that point for me, it was like, yeah, I want to change it, I want to change it, because it was on the shoulder of giants for me. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was a different it was a different thing because yeah, you gotta understand for me, it's like I don't even care about any of that. You get what I'm saying? I'm just like it's normal. <laughs> it still freaks me out now when people come up to me. Like, yeah. I'm like, what do you want? Do you know what I'm saying? But I forget. It's because, like, I'm just still, not, I'm just a roadman, same way. Do you get what I'm saying? But we never, I you've never changed. I do. You've never, you've, you've never changed. But I also don't, yeah. I, I, I even, I even when I used to phone you up, because for, for anyone out there, got to just put the table clear here. Crew Vibner does not do fucking drugs. Never has done, doesn't give a fuck, just smokes the <laughs> thing and that's it. Us lot, off our <laughs> fucking tits. Imagine having to be him and deal with us in his ear roll. On the best of times, I can't deal with people in my ear roll. <laughs> and I've been on it for years. So I've got to, I've got to give you the, you know, the namaste, man. The man you, build, you, build, you build a tolerance to it, you know. That's all it is, yeah. man. You build a tolerance. You know what I mean? You, you, you find whether somebody's starting talking shit within the first 30 seconds. So, you know. <laughs> but we, I mean, we had it up. I mean, I think that, that bringing them dub plates to you, because Timeless is one thing when it, when, it, when it dropped. But people forget that three or four tunes on that album... Chemistry, yeah. Sinister, they were already established with you and Fabio. Right, and that's right. That's right. Before that. That's right. You know, and I remember, I, the one thing I do remember is I remember when you had Terminator on plate for the first time. And yeah, man. When I first heard it played, and it cleared the dance floor. Yeah, but we knew what was going on. <laughs> I was oh, I mean, I came to you at the cage. We knew what was I was going on. And I said, and you went, don't worry, man. Because I, I mean, it was the first time I kind of got into the booth because there was a door that could let you into the into the booth. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of sacred ground. And you were packing yeah, yeah. records up. And I was just kind of standing there and you were like, you, you were almost, you didn't want to look at me directly in the eye. You were like, oh, wait, man. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be all right. Just gonna, it's gonna be fine. But I was gutted. I was destroyed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but you know. At the end of the day, tunes that last time don't normally, you know, don't always get it the first time round. 
people don't always get it. Some you got the growers, in it? It's all about the growers. The growers last to two, three, four, five, six, ten years. Do you get what I'm saying? Them, I mean, Terminator was on plate for, for how long? How long was Terminator on plate for? It's like he, I, I kept cutting it and cutting it. I mean, it must have been at least a year, at least a year and a bit. Yeah, it was a while, that. man. I remember it was a 12-inch plate because, you know, you have to remember, 12-inch plate because enough dough. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all about the tinnage. <laughs> right? You know? Yeah, right. I was doing it. Come, was... come with the artwork and everything. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Big head. <laughs> With a carving, I know it's carved yeah. on the plate as well. Because you know, right. for those of you that don't know, you know, that's where the name came from. Metal Heads was metal. You were on Kiss at the time. You might have remembered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you want to yeah, talk yeah. the metal tonight? Yeah, I got some heads, and I'm like, yeah, you just joined it up. You owe me twenty percent, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that one. Well, you know, I also loved. Why well, also loved the, the idea of the of serving the DJ was that you always. You know, like I'd always had this b-boy mentality, but you had you had SS doing his thing, and he would always come out with some something really cold. That I'd be like, I want to, you know, always be as good as that. And Gavin was already established doing some absolute yeah, bangers, yeah. sound of music, yeah, and music. Yeah. you know. And it was like for me, it was trying to join this. It was creating this this gang mentality and all this crew. But I was so glad to catch that train. Excuse the pun to get on mm. that thing with reinforced because we obviously Mark and Digo never really went out. So obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Metal Edge was the dub plate label, and they kind of gave me free grace to go and just service yeah, the boys. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was it, right. really. But I mean, right, I think Rage. Right, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the thing with um, sorry, the thing I want to get back to is you just had this whole thing with Rage as well, and that was been really successful because again, an establishment like Rage created people like me, created people like yeah. Nookie, created so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. You've seen, you've seen so even Prodigy. Look at the the way that you brought those. Exactly. Two. I mean, like you know, Rage went back from, as you know, right from the Acid House days and took it through to Jungle. It's kind of mad, man. The whole transition. Mad. You know what I'm saying? It's mad. Nothing. I don't think any. I mean, no clubs ever done something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? In, in, in that yeah. amount of going through that amount of music. A lot of music because I remember when you, when it started changing and it, when we started getting dark and you had a lot of man licking wood in the club and it got darker you know and we yeah. were in that, we were in that thing you know what i mean i want because i think want, I mean, the times for me as well i was doing a lot of madness and just getting a little bit but i felt that as much as i look back on that certain tunes and i think everyone hey, was just doing their thing because you got a little bit of helium but that's part of rave culture for me but i got that's when right. i got it i was kind of like yeah but i want to get a singer i want to get a vocalist i want to try and make it something else and just striving because it's well, basically you wanted to make your own samples because you have to remember that's what it was isn't it it was all about samples or where you could drag a sample from mm. but you took it that bit further where you wanted to make your own samples you mm. know what i'm saying get your own artists and get your own singers and your own strings mm. rather than ripping them out of tunes so you know that, that was the turning point when people realized that they could actually do that because you have to remember this is urban music so you still got the mentality. I don't think I can do that, or I don't think I can do this. Or, I don't think I can hire, hire, hire strings. I don't think I can go and get a bass player. I don't think I can do that. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you yeah. got that drilled into you from a from an early age. You get what I'm saying, especially yeah. as an urban youth. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. But people get to realise that's that's actually accessible. And you know what? I can actually get that. And you know what? I can actually write a few words here. Yeah. And I can get it to get somebody to sing it. But if you think you know about it, that's um, where you know before you know pre timeless, it was. It was reinforced giving me the blessing and I couldn't go any further. And me and Ian were, were moving around and we couldn't go any further. And then of course it was the deal with Arlington Street with the two the two EPs, which was Chemistry and, mm. and, and you know, an Angel. You know, yeah. two EPs because you had Knowledge, Sinister, Terminator as one EP. Then you had, you know, and, and, and following up on that, because I remember calling you and you were coming back from Donington not the time when I couldn't get in there, but I remember calling you saying, you, <laughs> this thing. you had the 0831 number. And yeah, I remember yeah. calling you up on the, on the standing on the desk going, I think we've done something really mad. And it was with, you know, obviously with the HF harmonizer with Terminator. And you went, yeah, yeah. just bring it come. And I was just seeing music out. Was, you know, bring it up, just bring it come. <laughs> and, and, and I was trying to stay on the phone and I'm eating off me nut going, what else can I say? You know, like, I think, I think you understood what I said. You know, we have million bars an hour. But I think for me, that was probably coming to London on the back of New York and going back to Wolves and coming back here. That was my biggest moment. For you, you know, it's just you, you're just doing your thing every week, week in, week out. Week in, week me, out, yeah. I always say to people, that was a moment where I thought, you know, I, I knew you as Groove Rider as a DJ, but I actually had your number. 
And I remember holding off, not calling the number. If you're gonna call him, don't talk stupidness. Call him when you got something. You know, and I guess yeah. you can with a lot of man because you know, if you got something, just call a number. It's like that kind of beeper number, just call a hotline. But I remember mm. doing Terminator that morning. I knew, I knew it was different. But obviously, to, to try and top that, re not top it is the wrong word to say. But of course, then he was dealing with, you know, Diane, because she was she managed by John, you know, and how yeah. he, he was doing the whole 52nd Street thing that she'd done. And they were trying to sing and of course, getting her in for chemistry. And for me, the, that was the track really that was kind of like, you know, when you guys were playing chemistry, that was, that was it. Because it was like, it was an original vocal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it really works. And, and of course, hearing it, 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 it's almost mad because even those tunes then seemed really out of context, even for what was happening. Do, do you course, know what I mean? Way ahead of their time, weren't they? You know, we could hear it though. That's what we liked. That, you know, remember the term cutting edge? Nobody uses it anymore, but that's what that was. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, there's nothing that sounded like chemistry at that time. Nobody was trying to do stuff like that. I think you we almost had to deconstruct it, G, because we made the darker versions because of the dub thing. You yeah, know, like exactly. you know, the VIPs and like Riders Ghosts and those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. We kind of deconstructed them because we wanted to get them raw to make them understand it. But it was almost the dub thing as well. I think Chemistry VIP was cold as hell. It was just different because, and I think the main, my main point of this thing was celebrating Timeless because you can't, you can't have Timeless. You can't have the finished fucking ring because the ring don't mean nothing because the ring's going to drop and it's going to happen. But it's what's in the crew support, what made it happen. Because things like This Is A Bad, which was taken from Fury, the one-in-one -one series with Rob Playford, if you remember the first tune I did with Rob. And then you look at, you look at you know, the, the, the chemistry version that came out on the album was different from the original version on the 12. But yeah. even also for me was Red Mercedes. You, we met in town, I think we met at Black Market. <laughs> we met at Black Market, or I think it was even Red Records. And just, just follow me, we're going to Tubby's. And I'm like, I'm going to Groove Rider with this stack. And I gave you the cassette in the car. I had the same cassette. I put it in, and I'm looking at your fat head through the window, thinking, I mean, Doc Scott Sierra, right? I've got Doc Scott's got Blue Sierra. And I remember thinking, see, you lean over to the thing, I thought, right, he's going to put it in now. Yeah, cool. And it was, it was Angel with Saint Angel. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and I know, I know on the cassette it was two things, but I know when we got to King's Cross, it must, it must have been St. Angel because your head's a bit fatted in the car. So I remember you thought I'm on the traffic lights. You know, I remember this. You walk the floor, you go out of the car, and you walk towards me in the car, and I'm grinning tea, winding the window down and winding, you know, like this. Went, Fuck you now, man. I just took, I took off the head, man. You've got to done it now. And I'm, the door was open, and you just, a little Mark, a little groove rider marched back to the car. And I'm thinking, yes! I fucking done it! You know, we can say Angel, Angel. After, on the it's back amazing. of Terminator was a, was a thing. But that was yours. It was made for yeah, yeah. you. You know, say Angel was a special moment. Yeah, I think Angel was like, it was horrible, though, man. It was too horrible, man. Do you know what I mean? Then you fucking, I remember when you rang me up, man, and you was playing me um, Ghost. <laughs> Ryder's Ghost. Oh shit, man! And you said, you, I remember you hadn't even arranged it yet. You just done it on the fly, innit? That I did it on the fly. Version. What it was, we had we had Ghost the full version up on the desk, and it was a desk mix which I just muted everything and just did yeah. it on the fly. And I said, Groove, I got this. And, I, and I'll tell you what was strange about that. I played it to you on the phone, but I remember giving you the dat, and I remember I didn't know where that version went. Yeah. And I, and I, I was, I was out. You were playing roast. And, and I think you phoned me and says, mate, the team just smash it, smash up the place. I'm like, what do you mean smash up the place? Because it was a diff it was another version on the end. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I thought you meant the main version. I'm thinking, Rossman ain't going to deal with the full version. It was, it was just full on hardcore. Yeah, but yeah. Like, nah, man, there's another version on it. And I think it was a minute later. <laughs> and it was, it was the version that I thought. It was the accident. <laughs> it was kind of the accident because I just did that version on the fly. Thinking he's got the main version, another version, but then he's sing on the end, and I never thought nothing of it. So that was the version, man. And that, that was, was the and one. that's kind of what what catapulted us doing, mate. You can't go too far. Just bring it back because that's that, what I'm that, saying, man. That's what I'm saying. Strip it down, man. Strip you know what I'm it. Sometimes sometimes we, over, we have people, you know, people do it all the time, man. Overwork tunes. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. it's just a roller that kills it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that, yeah, that was that, yours. That, 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 that was a shocker. That one. 
I mean, that went that went for me in the same way that comics be true could be played anywhere. Mm. You know what I mean? You could play that tune. That for me was your tune, Rose Road yeah. Man. It's a Road Man tune for me. Still to, to to this day, I still get people bawling for it when I got a roast and all them sort of things. Still asking for that. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you made one there, mate. 